Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. You know, I have a really, really super busy month coming up. And I don't want to be reduced to eating junk food. I don't feel good when I eat junk food. So I'm cooking ahead. I'm filling my freezer up with cook ahead frozen meals. And while I was making this meal plan, I realized that I had never done a video on classic beef stew. So I made a big pot of beef stew and filmed it for you. So before I show you this process, if you will, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We love it when you do. And if you click the little bell icon at the top right, you get a notice when I post new videos. Now let's get cooking. So classic beef stew can vary just according to who's making it and according to preferences. But this is how I make it. And uh, I have beef broth there. I have two large potatoes. I have one medium sized onion. I have a small pepper here that I grew. I had a late garden, a little one. I've got two large carrots and two celery sticks. I've got a stick of butter. I'm also going to add another two ounces of, I'm sorry, two tablespoons full of butter. I've got my roast there. That's a chuck roast. This is garlic powder. I've got a little thyme. And this is oregano. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I actually never put the oregano in. I changed my mind. And oh my, I'm almost out of thyme. It's time to buy thyme. I'm sorry, bad joke. I'll list all the ingredients in the info section below. So I never buy stew meat. This is a chuck roast and I have cut it up into pieces uh, and cut off the fat and gristle that was on it. And there wasn't a whole lot. This was a really nice little chuck roast. It weighs 30 ounces. I normally say you want about one and a half to two pounds of beef for this beef stew. And I've cut up the vegetables, everything except the onions, in here. And then I've got the onions cut up separately with the peppers because I'm going to put them in at different times. I've got that little pepper down there. And just a note about cutting things up. You want your carrots and your potatoes to be in about the same size chunks. And I always cut the beef a little smaller than they say. People... Recipes will say one to one and a half inch chunks of beef. I generally cut the beef a little thinner than that because I don't want to have to get a knife while I'm eating the stew. And I don't want to have to shove a one and a half inch piece of beef in my mouth. So I cut them about one inch uh, across, but then a little thinner so that they are easy to separate while you're cooking, while you're eating the stew. So I'm going to salt the beef. I, I cut it up, dried it off. I'm going to salt it. This little red spoon is a quarter teaspoon full, so I ended up putting about three quarters teaspoon on this. I may have to add salt later, depending on the broth and the vegetables, uh, but I'm going to start with about three quarter to one teaspoon full. And I'm going to put a little pepper on this. And let me get a fork. Sorry, I usually get that ahead of time because my drawers are not always neat. But anyway, so I'm going to stir that around and get it salted all over. And I'll put the spices on the onions while they are sweating, by the way. Just not the meat. And you see my stick of butter over there. I'm going to start by putting that stick of butter in my seven quart Dutch oven and let it be melting. I'm sorry for the shaking. I was kind of in a hurry tonight and didn't get all my stuff out ahead of time. Now this was measured out one half cup of flour. This is all-purpose flour. If what you have is self-rising, you can use that. You just need a little bit less salt. And the measurement of one-half cup 
I'm going to end up putting one half cup total in the stew. Um, but I don't need all of it to dredge the beef in. And what I'm doing at this point is I'm preparing the beef as I would to braise it. Braising means you brown something and then you cook it at a low heat in liquid. Water, beef broth, tomatoes, whatever you choose to use as your liquid. Uh, you cook it a long time at a slow temperature. That's how you cook any meat that's not a particularly tender cut of beef because braising will really tenderize the meat. Meet you at the stove. So I have melted the butter on a low heat. Probably could have been a little bit lower because you see it's starting to brown. And I'm going to just put the meat and any flour that's in my pan, my bowl, in. And we're going to brown this meat off a little bit, not on a high temperature. It'll brown really nicely in the butter at a medium high temperature. Uh, you want to spread it out. You don't want it piled on top of each other because your goal in this step is to get a little bit of browning on each piece and that helps seal in the moisture and the flavor uh, it's it's the first step in braising anything is you get a little browning on it if you pile it up it won't brown it will steam and steamed meat is kind of gray and not very attractive and generally not as tender so we're just going to spread this out and let it brown about a minute and a half on each side and I'll be back. So it's been a minute and a half, two minutes. We're getting some nice browning here. I'm going to turn these all over. And you know, you could probably do a, a, a turn really well with a spatula. I just am using a fork. I know that takes a little bit longer. But you do want to get some browning on both sides. I'm going to finish this. I'll be back again. So after another minute, to two minutes something like that I'm gonna take this out not every piece is fully browned none of them are fully done uh, but we've got a good bit of browning on here and that's gonna really make a deep flavor in our beef stew and that's really where that sort of deep beefy under flavor comes from it's not just from the beef it's from how you prepare the beef so we're going to get that browning, and you'll see, I'm, I'm putting this back into that blue pie plate you saw, and any juice that's still coming out, we're going to catch it and put it back in. And you'll see on the bottom here, we've got some fond, some little brown spots of where the flour was. Um, and we're going to leave that in there too, along with all the the butter that's left before we take our next step and that would be the onions and peppers and we're going to just cook those off until the onions have become translucent that won't take very long probably about three minutes and while they're cooking I've got a, a wooden ladle here wooden spatula and I'm going to Pull some of that fond up from the bottom just to keep it from burning. We'll deglaze it with a little liquid later, but I'm just loosening some of it. And as the onions and peppers brown. And now I'm going to add the garlic and just a little bit of salt. Not a whole lot, just a little because salt helps the um, onions to weep, to start to weep. And we're also going to add the garlic, and I'm using garlic powder. If you're using fresh garlic or uh, minced garlic that you buy in the jar, you want to add it right before you add the liquid because uh, garlic tends to get, it can get bitter. That fresh garlic can get bitter if you cook it too long. So that was the garlic. I have some thyme. I showed you my thyme bottle is almost empty. But I'm adding a half teaspoonful of garlic. 
I'm adding about a quarter teaspoonful of salt spread out on top of here. I'll add my thyme and a bay leaf later. Loosening a little bit more of that fond. The reason I'm using wood is because this is enameled cast iron. If you're just using cast iron, you can use a metal spatula. I just don't want to scratch the inside of my enameled cast iron pan, so I switched over to a wood ladle just for this, this part of it. So you got your spices in. I'm going to let those cook for a minute, and I'll be back. So once the onions and peppers cook long enough for the onions to start becoming translucent, we're going to make a roux, and that's what's going to give you that nice gravy base in your beef stew. Uh, and there's not much free fat in there. It's been absorbed by the onions. Some was, was absorbed by the meat. And you need some free fat to interact with the flour that we're going to add. So I'm going to throw about two tablespoons full in there. Um, that's just a guess, but it's an educated guess. So two tablespoons full should be enough. You don't want to add too much because we only have about a quarter cup more flour to add. The rest of it we use to dredge the meat. So I'm just going to let that melt. Now, I used butter all the way through this. I started with butter and I've added butter now. You can start with oil. Uh, you can, if you use lard, you can use lard. If you use Crisco, you can use Crisco. But at this point, I would add a little butter just for the flavor. Um, but most any fat will work. So, I mean, if you want to use oil, you can. I just, I just prefer the flavor of adding some butter. And butter is a good fat, by the way. Better for you than most vegetable oils. You could, on this last step, add your extra virgin olive oil, but I wouldn't use it for the first step because that's too much heat for too long a time for olive oil to be at its best. When your butter is all melted, we're going to add, and I, I, I confess I'm being approximate here, about four tablespoons of tomato paste. Now this is absolutely optional. Most of the time I don't put tomato any tomato based products in my beef stew but I'm gonna bow to convention and um, a little tomato paste is usually included in most beef stew recipes but I don't usually use it I like the beef stew a little bit more without it but this is um, a video and I'm showing you classic beef stew so I'm showing you the tomato paste you do want to stir it around and uh, let it be absorbed and mixed with the onions before we add the flour to make our roux. Now there's still not a lot of free fat in there. You'll see that, but I'm going to go ahead and add this quarter cup of flour. That's half cup total. And our, our fat contents not going to be exact here, but this will work out just just about right. Uh, when you have when you're making a roux with a half cup flour, then you're going to need about four cups of liquid to make a gravy or sauce. So remember, our formula for this is you add your fat and flour amount together. So we've got half cup flour. I'm going to say half cup of free fat that will be added. There's some over here in the meat and there's some still in here. You add those together, that's one. One cup. You multiply that by four, you get four cups. So you're going to need about four cups of broth. And then you'll adjust that to get it to the thickness you want. We don't want this quite as thick as gravy. So I'll add an additional two cups of broth as this cooks so that I thin it down to get to the point that we have the nice beef sauce that you associate with good beef stew. And I'm going to put all these quantities and all the ingredients in the info section. So once that flour gets a little brown, I'm going to start adding the broth. And at this time, I'm going to use that liquid to deglaze the fond off the bottom of this pan because, oh, that's tasty stuff. 
Don't get rid of it. Be sure you loosen it from the pan because you want all that flavor in your stew when you're done. So when you're adding broth, you're going to add it slowly to start with, and you're going to get a thick gooey mess, but it's not going to lump because you've got a hot roux and a cold broth. Room temperature, but it could be refrigerated, but not hot, because if you add a cold liquid to a hot roux, then all the lumps will just stir right out. And if, you, if by some chance you're using a cold roux, like you make your roux ahead and you have it in the refrigerator, then you'd want to use a hot broth. So I've got that started. I'm going to switch over here and use a whisk. And that's, you need that to make sure you don't have the lumps. And I'll add the broth now at a much higher speed. I'll, I'll add a little bit at a time, but bigger amounts and stir, stir the whole time. Make sure you pull it down from the sides. And you can see the beginning of that nice sauce that you expect in your stew. It makes it velvety. In, in reality, this is a variation of, of the French mother sauce, velouté, which means velvet. It's darker but a velouté is usually a light sauce. Well, it is a light sauce. But we're going to put all this broth in. And I have more broth. I have about two cups more broth, but I'm not adding it right now. Right now, I want to have enough liquid in here to simmer and cook the other raw vegetables that I've cut, the carrots, the, the, the potatoes, and the celery. So once I get that all stirred in, I'll be back. So now we're going to add back in the meat. There's a good bit of juice in there. Some little bits of flour that have been browned. And we'll stir that in. And then I'll add the veggies. And we'll stir all that in. And how long we cook it now really depends on the size you cut your vegetables. Some people like bigger chunks. I cut mine, I guess, in medium-sized chunks. And some people cut it up pretty small. But I'm going to estimate this stage is going to take about 40 minutes. But it won't take 40 minutes of work. It'll just take 40 minutes of waiting. And I'm going to turn the heat up until I get a simmer. A bubble just a little bubbling and now I'm gonna add the time you know the time that I'm almost out of and one bay leaf and I'll fish that bay leaf out before I actually serve the stew when I stir that in I'm gonna taste for salt and you do want to taste it at about this point for salt and you can add some black pepper or red pepper flakes if you like it now I'm just going to let this come up to a very soft bubble. You see the little bubbles around the outside. That will usually happen at just a, a nudge above your uh, middle heat, medium heat. Put a lid on it, set my timer for 40 minutes, and then I'll be back. So this has been simmering at a low simmer for about 40 minutes. And now I'm going to gauge how much more broth I need. And I'm going to add one cup right now. The potatoes and the celery and the carrots are not fully cooked. They're not soft yet. You want to cook them till they're soft. Nobody wants to bite down on a piece of hard uh, potato or carrot. And you could see that it was getting pretty thick, so I added one more cup of the broth and stirred it in. I'm going to set my timer for 20 minutes and come back and check it again. So it's been 20 more minutes, an hour total, at a medium to low simmer. And I want to check the potatoes now and see if they're soft enough. And 
yeah, you can see they're done all the way through. They're not really soft. And I've got another few minutes to cook it, so that's fine. This is a half cup frozen peas. And by the way, if you didn't have fresh carrots, you could use peas and carrots now, but use a whole cup of them instead of the carrots that you put in earlier. If you use the frozen peas and carrots, you're going to put them in at the end. And we're going to stir that around. Now, I want this to cook now just long enough for the peas to get good and done and for everything to sort of simmer together. If you want to add a little more broth at this time, you can. I can add the other cup. Depends on how thick you want it. It will be a little bit thicker at the end, even though you've got a lid on the pan, so you're not evaporating a lot. But I ended up putting in a total of one quart and then two cups, so one and a half quarts. We're going to cover this up now, about 15 more minutes to let those peas get good and hot and cooked. And we'll be back and have dinner. And this is my classic beef stew. I've sprinkled some dried parsley flakes on top. If I'd had fresh parsley, I would have used that. I took the uh, bay leaf out. And I want you to look at this gravy and the consistency of the, the potatoes and the vegetables. I know this takes a long time. Uh, you could make beef stew quicker than this. But you couldn't make beef stew better than this by any quick method. We've taken the time to layer in the flavor and I sometimes say the time to add the love. I want to cut through one of these pieces of beef just because it's really really hot right now and I, I don't want to put that chunk of beef in my mouth and burn my tongue. But it cuts through really easily just with a fork with a case knife and we're gonna taste the beef and I'll probably have to take a bite out of it. It's really hot. You can see all that steam. This has a deep flavor. And whether or not you add the tomato paste, uh, you're going to really love the, the textures that you get. See, I took a bite off. That's really tender beef. Braising always makes your meat tender. I hope you take the time to make this recipe and try it. And I hope you really love it. And you should know that from that great big pot, I've got six pints of beef stew in my freezer for quick meals later. And I'm going to add a little cornbread to mine. This is also cornbread that I cooked ahead and put in the freezer. Real time savers, but you don't sacrifice any of the flavor. Hope you come back to see us again tomorrow on Debbie's Back Porch.